This time in my hands is Sapphire version of HD5770, which I get for chocolate bar. Of course, this card is not new, even better, this card's driver support ended back in late 2015. But here is what this 2009 card has inside. As I mentioned, this card was released in 2009 with Juniper graphics processor and 800 shading units. At that time, there was only two card variations, 1GB what I have right now, and 512 megabyte variants, but both versions used fast GDDR5 memory. I mean, for nowadays it's nothing special, but for 2009, when GDDR3 memory was most popular type of GPU memory, that was huge improvement. But now, back at this card specs. This card have 128-bit bus width and TDP of 108 watts. That's pretty good TDP for 800 shading units and GDDR5 memory. But I shouldn't be impressed with TDP, because this card is from evergreen generation, when AMD started to look at power consumption. But now, I'm gonna show you two games that is specifically designed to perform good with this card, and two games that are popular now. First game that is expected to perform well is Bioshock 2 Remastered version, in 1080p high graphics preset and anti-aliasing turned on. Card averaged 73.1 FPS, minimum was 0.1 FPS and maximum was 166.8 FPS. As expected, graphics card performed well enough to enjoy the game, but sometimes card dropped frame rate to 0.1 FPS when changing zones, but I think you can turn off anti-aliasing and it will be fixed. For second game, I choose still widely known and played Borderlands 2 in 1080p, but this time in medium settings, and FXAA turned off for stable FPS. Average frame rate was 66.1, minimum was 12.9 FPS, and the maximum was 152 frames per second. When I played games, I noticed that card couldn't exceed 60 degrees. That was really great surprise. But can card surprise me in still popular game in nowadays? GTA 5? Well, one thing was surprising, that I needed to run GTA 5 at 720p, normal preset, but at least with FXAA on. Plus, game run best in DirectX 11. GTA's average frame rate was 70.3 FPS, minimum was 52.7 FPS, and maximum was 86.9 FPS. I mean, game's FPS was good, but I expected 1080p from this card. But limiting point wasn't card's core count or memory type. No, the limiting point was memory size of just 1 GB. Why AMD? Just why? And for the next popular game, I run Rocket League. In 1080p, performance preset. Average FPS was 60.6. Minimum was 47.3 FPS and maximum was 76.7 frames per second. At least here I could run game at 1080p and in this game I saw big overclocking potential for this card. So maybe follow up videos will be about this card also. For some of you big old hardware enthusiasts, I couldn't skip heaven benchmark, but in 720p, low quality preset, so I could get at least 60 FPS. Sapphire averaged 84.9 FPS and minimum was 51.5 FPS, where maximum was 147.5 FPS. Of course, I could get more FPS in DirectX 9 mode, but it's too old, no one is using it for some while now, so I stick with DirectX 11, what this card supported. And as for the score, card scored 2132 points. But I think we can ramp up this number when card is overclocked, but that we will see in some future. In the end, I will say that I definitely will overclock this GPU, but as for now, how it is, it's quite a big piece of powerhouse of that time. But as for gaming in 2024, with this card, I'm not sure for now if this card without overclock can run games in playable FPS. But I'm surprised how well card hold cool temps of the GPU diode. And as of the benchmarks I've done, I can surely say that performance was on point for the card of that year with just only 1GB of VRAM. I know for the fact that card could do better 
in GTA 5 or other GPU intensive games, if it would be bigger memory size. But for now, thank you for watching this video and subscribe if you want to see more this type of videos. See you in the next video.